uh, move on uh, to uh, Pavel Putrov's talk. So, um, uh, can you see my my window? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you? We can start. So, uh, we are happy to have uh, Pavel Putrov here from ICTP Trieste. Um, he will talk about spin cobordism surgeries and fermionic modular bootstrap. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for introduction, and I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me uh, to give a talk at this uh, great conference. So I will, my talk will be based on a recent work done together with my student, Andrea Grigoletto. And uh, uh, so in the beginning, let me be uh, quite general and schematic, but later on I will be more concrete. Uh, so suppose we consider a quantum field series with some um, fixed uh, global symmetry group G. And uh, then we can consider the following three abelian groups. So the first abelian group is simply as a group of all representations of this G. And the second abelian group would be a group which classifies anomalies of G. So it has a natural uh, abelian group structure with respect to stacking of an interacting in inter non-directing series. Equivalently, one can understand this uh, group as a group of uh, invertible topological quantum field series in one higher dimensions, which has uh, the symmetry group G. And the second, for the third group, uh, let me consider uh, some particular space-time X, and one can consider all possible uh, anomalous phases uh, that can appear uh, under action of uh, large diffeomorphisms or gauge transformations of a series with uh, for series on X, so that they are they are just consistent with uh, with the group structure on these groups of large diffeomorphisms and gauge transformations. So then one can consider uh, a sequence of uh, homomorphism between these three abelian groups. So physically, uh, these uh, maps can be understood as follows. So the first map is given by taking a series of three fermions in a given representations and uh, uh, considering the value of the corresponding anomaly of the series. And the second map can be understood as, consider as a, is given by the representation of a corresponding invertible TKFT in one high dimension on a Hilbert spaces uh, associated uh, to X uh, with possibly some uh, non-trivial backgrounds uh, background gauge fields uh, for our uh, global symmetry group G. And so this is uh, considered as a representation of this topological quantum series with respect to a group uh, of, uh, again, large diffeomorphisms and gauge transformations. So the goal is uh, to understand uh, more or less explicitly how to evaluate these maps. Of course, this uh, problem is interesting when, the, uh, when we consider non perturbative anomalies, because in, in perturbative case, uh, this is uh, relatively well known how to do this. And uh, uh, so there are some basic motivations behind this. Uh, so the motivation for understanding the first map is of course, uh, uh, to answer the questions like anomaly cancellation, suppose we, it's a, so when I rise, when, suppose we want to gauge this G or anomaly matching between uh, two possibly different series, if we can, uh, would like to check if they can be equivalent in the infrared. And uh, the second map is uh, important for understanding, uh, for example, what kind of constraints uh, anomaly puts on uh, uh, possible values of partition functions or spectrum on a theory uh, on some given uh, space time, as for example, can be done using modular bootstrap techniques. So these uh, uh, this maps have a very, uh, uh, important property, which uh, can be formulated as follows. Suppose we consider a homomorphism between uh, two different symmetry groups. So a basic example of this is if you, we can consider again the subgroup uh, of, uh, of another symmetry group. And then uh, for any such homomorphism, uh, there will be a corresponding pullbacks maps between these uh, uh, three groups, which I uh, just described. and. Uh, is a nice property is that if we if we, if we, if we, if we, if we, if we put them together with these uh, maps which I described before, this whole diagram will be commutative. And uh, uh, this is actually very constraining uh, condition. 
which can be used uh, uh, to do some calculations. But um, let me mention that mathematically, this condition can be understood as follows. So these uh, groups uh, which appear here, they can be sort of values of certain functors uh, from the group, uh, from, from the category of all groups to the category of abelian groups. And uh, so these are contravariant functors. That's why uh, we have pullbacks corresponding to homomorphism. And this property can be stood as uh, uh, the fact that we have a, a natural transformation between these functors. But let me mention again, so this is not just uh, some abstract nonsense. This actually can be uh, used uh, to, uh, to do some calculations. In particular, the version of this constraint was actually used before, but mostly in the case when G prime was uh, continuous. So for example, such type of relations were used to uh, relate non-perturbative anomalies and perturbative ones. So let me proceed with a more concrete setup. So let me uh, consider uh, the case of two dimensions and uh, consider the series with, which has a symmetry, which is a product of fermion parity times some uh, symmetry group, which I assume to be finite and unitary. And let me consider them on a, a two-dimensional space-time, which is a torus. Then uh, explicitly this uh, group uh, uh, of representations is, can, is, uh, can be suited as a, so one way to understand it as a, just a free abelian group generated by all irreducible real representations. It can be understood just as a, as a usual ring of real representations considered just as an abelian group under direct sum of representations. And uh, uh, so the group uh, which classifies anomalies, so let me, yeah, uh, let me mention that here I'm considering the case that uh, uh, all series are assumed absent of perturbative anomalies. So in this case, the anomalies are known to be classified by the following contracted dual to a, a spin Bardism group in three dimensions. So this type of uh, Bardism groups are already uh, appeared in a Renvalisano talk, for example. And so let me remind you, so what it is. So this is a, a group of uh, equivalence classes of three dimensional manifolds equipped with G bundles so that uh, the pair of manifolds are declared to be equivalent if they form a boundary of a four dimensional manifold uh, so that the uh, corresponding spin structures and G bundles are induced from this bulk for manifold. So the elements of this group, which classified anomalies, can be understood as invariants, as a Bordism invariant. So the and uh, physically they correspond to values uh, to the partition values of the partition function of the uh, bulk TQFT, which corresponds to, to the anomaly bind flow on uh, on these uh, three manifolds. And then the first map uh, can be realized physically as follows. So uh, the elements of this in the in the first group are formal differences of representations. So one can take, a, uh, for example, rot two minus rho one. So one can take a series of uh, left uh, moving fermions in representation rho one and a series of right moving fermions in representation rho two, and also add a bunch of uh, fermions uh, in a trivial representation. So that the total uh, chiral center of charge is zero because we want the perturbative anomaly to be zero. And uh, uh, finally, uh, the third group, the group which describes uh, possible anomalous phases, uh, has a mathematical interpretation, uh, which is written here. So it's a, it's a certain uh, uh, cohomology group, uh, where the group is a, is a product of G and uh, uh, so-called metaplasic group, which is a, a central extension of, uh, of the usual model group by Z2. And the coefficients in these group cohomologies are product of U1s, so that uh, each one is assigned uh, to a certain choice, choice of background, which can be the choice of spin structure and the choice of uh, uh, background G bundle. And uh, uh, so again, this, the second map is given by uh, just uh, uh, considering a representation of the uh, Hilbert space of the of the three-dimensional bulk TKFT uh, with respect to uh, the action of this uh, group of uh, large gauge transformations and large deformorphisms extended uh, to the to ex 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 extended to the uh, deformorphisms of uh, spin manifolds. And for short, I will denote this uh, the group classify classifying anomalies as A of G and group classifying possible phases by phi of G. 
And uh, uh, so I will first uh, consider this first map. And so to touch base, let me consider a well, very well-known example when the, uh, the group is Z2, uh, then the anomaly group is well-known to be Z8, and the representation ring is now generated by a trivial representation, which is real one-dimensional, and a sign representation, which is non-trivial one-dimensional representations. So that uh, the trivial representation is mapped to zero and the sign representation is mapped to the generator Z8. So what happens uh, in general? So in general, we have a certain map from this representation, real representation ring to the group classifying anomalies, which I will call for short uh, as a uh, chunk character map because it's analog of the uh, corresponding chunk character map in the perturbative case. And so in general, it's very hard to, to, to fix this explicitly, but uh, well, certain components of this map can be described rather explicitly uh, and which was done in this paper. But instead we want to propose to uh, kind of fix, uh, we will propose that the, the, the values of this map can always fix uh, kind of using uh, the following uh, three main properties of this map. So in, in a sense, this map can be axiomatically defined using the linearity property, which is just a statement that this is a group homomorphism between abelian groups. And uh, the property is a neutrality property, so that uh, if you consider homomorphism uh, between, uh, from G to G prime, so note that physically uh, this means that, so why do we have pullbacks between the corresponding uh, anomaly groups is that because any, if you have a symmetry, if you have a, a theory with symmetry G prime and you have such homomorphism, we can automatically consider it as a, as a, as a theory with symmetry group G, whereas G acts by composing elements of G with this homomorphism. So let me mention here, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, assuming that uh, groups act faithfully. So in particular, in principle groups can, can act trivially. And then we want to require that uh, is the following commutativity. So we can first take a pullback of this representation of G prime to representation of G, but we can do this in a different order. We first want to calculate the corresponding anomaly and then take a pullback in the corresponding anomaly group. And the third uh, defining property is a normalization. So uh, we want to fix the values of this map for uh, whenever G is abelian. And uh, these values are essentially listed in our paper. So in part, this is just a collection of known results, but in part, uh, it's new. And uh, uh, so let me uh, give a simple example how this, uh, how this can work to determine uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the values of the map from uh, the representations to the anomalies, which again, physically correspond to taking the anomaly of fermions. So let me consider a simple non-abelian group. Uh, it's a symmetric group uh, of uh, S3, the group of permutation of three elements. And one consider uh, the first subgroup, embedding of the Z2 subgroup as a subgroup of transposition of just two elements. And then consider also Z3 as a subgroup of cyclic permutation. And also consider a map from S3 to Z2, which is given by uh, taking a parity of representation. Uh, and uh, if you consider the corresponding anomaly groups, so for Z2, this is again Z8, and for Z3, Z3 is the classifying group is Z3, and one can show that for uh, this S3 group, the classifying group is Z8 times Z3, we have, uh, so we have the corresponding uh, maps in the opposite directions. And uh, so by knowing uh, how this character map acts, how, how this character map, uh, how the character map acts in the case of uh, all abelian groups, uh, we can determine it here. So in particular, in this case, there are three irreducible representations. So there is one-dimensional trivial representations, one-dimensional representation which acts by a uh, sign of parity. And there is a, a non-trivial two-dimensional real representation, which uh, can be stood as a, as a representation given by isometries of a collateral triangle in uh, two dimensions and uh, one can explicitly determine the images of these representations in the anomaly group by using the properties, which I described before. So now let me proceed uh, to uh, the group 
are describing anomalous phases. Uh, so let us uh, consider uh, the set of all, so now we have a torus as a space time and let me consider the set of all possible uh, spin structures on a torus and uh, uh, background uh, in, and uh, isomorphism classes of the G bundles, which is equivalent. So these, uh, these are just equivalents to assigning a pair of holonomies to each uh, one cycle on the torus. Uh, so the, in this case, so if I consider, for example, the case of G equals Z2, there are six impossible choices of the grounds. So here one and zero or zero uh, denotes the holonomies of the global symmetry group and A and P uh, denotes either periodic or anti-periodic uh, spin structure conditions. And then, uh, so the, the data of anomalous phases is, can be used as, as an assignment of one dimensional uh, complex vector spaces uh, to each uh, element of this set. Uh, and uh, uh, for each uh, element of the, uh, of the group G times uh, this uh, extend, extended version of SL to Z, which is also often referred as a metaplexic group. Uh, so for each, for each element of the group, we want uh, to assign a corresponding a linear map between a, a pair of corresponding, between a pair of corresponding uh, vector spaces. And uh, all possible such assignment up to change of basis, so, such as they're consistent with the group law, uh, they can be classified by the, by the following uh, first homology group. So equivalently, this, must, this can be assumed as a representation of a group void where the objects of the group voids are again the, the choices of the background. And then uh, uh, one can show that the, uh, the map from the group classifying anomalies to this group of all possible phases uh, is, uh, can, which, which is given by a considering representation of uh, a representation given by the corresponding bulk to KFT uh, can be fixed just by considering uh, the partition function of this radius of t on certain closed manifolds, which in particular can be always taken to be map and tori, but this is not always necessary. And uh, uh, so these, uh, these correspondences can be, it can be realized roughly by taking, so in each con connected component of this uh, group void, we can fix some basis object, so basis uh, choice of background, and then for each other object in the group void, we fix a pass to this uh, base object. And then if you consider, for example, one, so that then we identify uh, the corresponding vector spaces to the vector space uh, of the Bay ob object. And then for any arrow between two different objects, we just uh, compose it with this, uh, with the ch some chosen fixed pass to the Bay object, base object. So we get a certain loop. And uh, for this loop, we have a corresponding uh, mapping torus. And the value, uh, the value of the, of the invertible GQT on this mapping torus gives us, uh, determines this uh, linear map. So, uh, so in principle, this gives a description of this map from the uh, group of anomalies to the group of possible phases. But of course, we want to make it more explicit. We want to uh, learn how to calculate it. Uh, so let, first, uh, let me know that uh, since, uh, uh, the set of uh, all possible background uh, G gauge, G gauge field on a torus is essentially uh, the set of all possible commuting pairs on a torus. Uh, one can use this uh, to uh, essentially boil down everything to the case of uh, abelian groups. So one can always consider uh, a certain uh, so different different abelian subgroups of uh, G prime of G, and more they can all these subgroups can be are always has at, mo at most two independent generators. So it was that it's enough to uh, calculate the values of uh, partition function of the corresponding convertible to KFT or equivalently the values of the corresponding Bordism invariants uh, on mapping Tori in the case of uh, when G is a billion with at most two independent generators. But in fact, we actually will show how to calculate these uh, Bardism invariants on any uh, close pin 3 manifold in an easy way using their surgery representation. 
So let me remind briefly what is the uh, surgery realization of three manifolds. Uh, so let me, uh, so any three manifold can be realized by surgery on what is called a, a framed link. So let me consider a V component link in S3 and the framing geometry can be suited to the choice of a normal vector field to each component, non-vanishing no, no, normal vector field to each component. And uh, more combinatorially, the framings can be, uh, can be uh, fixed by assigning an integer number to each link component so that it corresponds to a, a, what is called self-linking number, which is a linking number between uh, the link component and it's push off towards the framing vectors. Then uh, three manifold corresponding to, the, to this data can be obtained as follows. So we remove uh, a tubular neighborhood for each link component as we loop back in uh, solid tori, uh, so that the contractible cycle in solid tori uh, is uh, uh, mapped to a, to a one cycle uh, given by, traced by this uh, uh, normal vector field given by the framing. Uh, so it's often useful to introduce uh, uh, the, what is called linking matrix. So it's a V by V linking matrix. And then uh, things like uh, background ZN uh, gauge field, uh, which is the, as a first elements, the elements in the first cohomology group of our three manifold with ZN coefficient can be combinatorially described as false. So they can be described as a, a rank V modern vectors, which satisfy this condition. And similarly, the spin structures can be combinatorially described as a rank V mod two vectors, which uh, satisfy these conditions. In particular, for each uh, spin structure uh, described by si such uh, rank V mod two vector, one can assign what is called characteristic sublink. It's a union of components of our link L uh, over indices uh, for which uh, uh, the corresponding S vector describing spin structure is one modular uh, two. Okay. And uh, uh, so using such uh, combinatorial description, uh, one can show that in the case of uh, abelian group with at most two generators, all possible Bardism invariants can be expressed uh, uh, using just the two basic uh, invariants which are listed here. So one, uh, uh, which I don't gamma S is, takes as the values uh, ZN ground gauge field on our three manifold and uh, spits out uh, an element of Z to N and it's given by uh, the following expression in terms of uh, this combinatorial description of the spin structure and the gauge field. And the other invariant which we will use is uh, uh, takes as an input uh, Z2 uh, background gauge field and output is a uh, mod eight uh, values invariant. And it's given by the following formula in terms of the surgery where here it's a, uh, uh, it, it, this is what is called R invariant of a link. And uh, so these links which appear, which appear here are characteristic sublinks corresponding to particular choice of spin structure. And uh, so the values of these are invariants uh, are well, well known for basic, for basic links and uh, well, it's easy, relatively easy to calculate in general. Uh, but also here I give some combinatorial description which is very easy to use for calculation but in principle these invariants can, give, uh, can, uh, can be given some geometric interpretation in terms of uh, uh, surfaces uh, representing Poincare duals uh, to these uh, cohomology elements. So let me give a simple example how I can use this to calculate uh, uh, the action, for example, the action of uh, T square uh, element in SL to Z on, uh, on, the, on the vector space corresponding to this background. So we have a torus with periodic period spin structure and holonomy uh, one uh, along one direction. Uh, so in the case of GZ2, the anomaly is again classified by Z8 and uh, choosing some new mod eight, uh, the corresponding Bardism invariant is new times invariant beta, which I uh, introduced before. 
And uh, using this uh, surgery representation, it's easy to calculate it uh, to get the following volume. And uh, so in this case, uh, the surgery uh, can be realized by the following link with three components, which is uh, known as Borromean rings. And the linking matrix is uh, very simple. Uh, so let me mention, in principle, one can use this uh, directly the geometrical interpretation of the invariants. Uh, so uh, the geometric interpretation is the following. So one can take a concrete dual uh, surface representing uh, this element of the first cohomology with the two coefficients. So physically, this uh, surface can be used as the support of the uh, Z2 charge operator in our theory. And then uh, the, so the, the spin structure in the three manifold induces P minus structure. Uh, on the surface for which we can calculate mod eight valued R brown invariant. And uh, so physically this, this relation uh, uh, can be understood as uh, equipping, decorating this charge operator with uh, one plus one dimensional SPT known as Kitai's Kitai spin chain. So in this particular example, when we can again consider the mapping torus of T2, uh, which starts from these uh, torus with periodic periodic spin structure and holonomies one zero. Uh, the corresponding surface is, uh, is, is, is a connected sum of three copies of RP2. And again, by calculating its R for R bound to Y environment, we arrive at the same uh, expression. And this can be done uh, for all other uh, generators, uh, for, 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 uh, for other elements of SL2Z. So as an example, we can, uh, as, as an application, we can use uh, the, uh, the, the known, uh, known model transformations uh, to do a uh, uh, modular bootstrap. And this uh, we do essentially by uh, generalizing the, the work done in Boson case by these uh, people uh, using uh, this uh, SDPP semi-different program solver. So here I just leave some results. So these, uh, uh, these are bounds on the, the lightest colors in the uh, Neveshwar sector untwisted uh, with projection to the trivial fermion parity and the trivial uh, Z2 global charge. And so, so the horizontal axis correspond to the central charge and the vertical ax axis is a conformal dimension of the lightest scalar and different curves correspond to different uh, values of the anomaly. In particular, the skinks uh, uh, can be understood, can, can be real, the, the points be, below the skinks can be realized uh, by uh, free uh, fermions where the, uh, the, the, the Z2 global symmetry acts either as left moving or right moving fermion parity. Uh, so finally, let me mention uh, some possible future directions. Of course, it would be, is there some uh, kind of uh, obvious ways to try to generalize it uh, to, first of all, it would be interesting to do this bootstrap for, in the case of fermionic series with uh, some non-abelian global symmetries. And uh, it would mean if, if one can do something in high dimensions or for generalized symmetries mentioned in the Shuheng Shao talk. And another uh, interesting thing is that, uh, so suppose we can see the now fermionic series, which apart from this G global symmetry, now also has zero one supersymmetry. And these are supposed to be classified by G quariant version of the uh, secret topological model forms, which was mentioned in the Yuji Tajikawa stocks. So here, the, the anomaly group uh, plays a role of uh, uh, some additional grading. And uh, in particular, the pre part of this series uh, is described by a certain uh, Jacobi like model of forms for which the model transformations are determined uh, by this uh, map. Uh, to, the, to, to, the, to the anomalous, to, to the group of anomalous phases. Okay, so that's it. That's, what, that's all I wanted to say. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your uh, interesting talk. Um, so we have time for questions. I see uh, Gregory Moore. Um, yes, could, could you go back to the uh, Bordism invariance defined by Kirby at all? This? Uh, yeah, I, I had trouble following this. Uh, so in the first one for gamma sub s, n is not invertible modulo to n. Yeah, so here, here what, what I'm saying, one can take any representative. So a is this. So one can take any lift of a to z to the v. And then it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter. It shows that it doesn't matter. 
Okay, it's, so, uh, it's using, so, okay. the, using this so, property, this property one can show that it doesn't matter. Okay, so, um, so similarly, you're choosing integral lifts. Oh, well, here it's, uh, here it's actually important. In the second, it's actually important that here to, to do this formula, it's important that S is chosen to be only zero and one. So it's a particular leap to Z. So A ah. is, is, yeah. So, so here is. So, so A, I see. So A is any any integral left and S, S is zero or one. And, and then you say these are well-defined. And, and similarly, in the same spirit, you know, if the ARF invariant is mod two valued, then four times the ARF invariant is zero. So I wasn't quite sure what you meant. By well, this is, uh, this is good because this is uh, mod, mod, two de mod two defined. So this is already mod A defined. So you're I, uh, so so you're embedding, what? you're embedding Z two and Z eight. Okay, I had a more conceptual question. So um, I didn't I didn't follow how the topological and anomaly cancellations that you you used in most of your talk are input into the fermionic bootstrap. It's probably just because I don't know enough about the fermionic bootstrap, but it seemed like a giant leap in slide thirteen. Well, we, okay, we here, we determine, the anomaly determine essentially all these maps, uh, how, how these linear maps corresponding to S and T act. Sure, that was clear. So, yeah, and then this map, uh, they, uh, they, they, they put the constraints, so. Oh, okay, I, I, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't write this, you're but. Just, so. You're just constraining the partition functions under modular transformations using this. So, so this, uh, this, for each of these uh, objects in the viewport, we have a corresponding partition function which depends on tau and these uh, twists. Okay, okay. Now I see what you mean. And then the, uh, this gives us some non-trivial relation between the partition function with different uh, twists and, uh, and different uh, t, t uh, related by t going to minus one or t or t plus one. Okay, so I, uh, that um, correct. You have um, one more. No, no, I'm done. Okay, so then we have a last question for Kumram Wafa. Uh, thanks uh, for a nice talk, Pavel. Uh, perhaps it's something related to what you already said, but I'm not completely sure. So, uh, if you take the G symmetry and twist the theory by that, the phases that you studied presumably will give you some information about the Verlinde algebra you get for such a twisted overfold. Have you studied the relation between this? I mean, it's going to be a vector valued object. So at that point. Uh, well, no, we haven't studied it, but well, in part, yeah, this uh, essentially the bosonic version, well, the bosonic version of this is, uh, uh, if I guess the bosonic version of this, this is uh, uh, quite uh, closely related to these uh, orbifolds which were considered before, yes. So is there a general map between finding, I mean, for, for example, the overfold uh, for a, a rational conformal field theory with G symmetry has been tried to be classified in some older works. The question is, do you have a map between this and that story? I just want to know what is the... Uh... Well, not really, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it would be good to think, uh, yeah, I think about it. Yeah, yeah not, really, not really to answer it. Thanks. Okay, so then I don't see any more questions. And uh, so let's thank uh, Pavel again. And uh, 